Linda. That way we will hopefully have a little time at the end. Hi everyone. Thanks for joining us today for CNCF's live webinar, Running Distributed Load Tests with the Grafana K6 Operator. I'm Libby Schultz and I'll be moderating today's webinar. I'm going to read our code of conduct and then hand over to Paul Baylog, developer advocate with Grafana Labs. <laughs> A few housekeeping items before we get started. During the webinar, you are not able to talk as an attendee. There is a chat box on the right-hand side of your screen. Please feel free to drop your questions there, and we'll get to as many as we can at the end. This is an official webinar of the CNCF, and as such, is subject to the CNCF Code of Conduct. Please do not add anything to the chat or questions that would be in violation of that Code of Conduct. And basically, please be respectful of all of your fellow participants and presenters. Please also note the recordings and slides will be posted later today to the online programs page at community.cncf.io under online programs. They're also available via your registration link and the recording will be available on our online programs YouTube playlist. With that, I will hand things over to Paul to kick off today's presentation. All right. Well, thank you very much. Um, and welcome everyone. Hopefully, uh, you know, uh, for me, it's lunchtime, so hopefully everyone's already had their lunch and don't have uh, uh, growling stomachs to distract them from all this information that you're going to be getting here today. So, but uh, yeah, so again, thank you, Libby. Uh, my name's Paul Baylog. I am a developer advocate on the K6 open source project with uh, Grafana Labs. Um, you can contact me at Java Ducky on Twitter, or uh, I'm now also with the same moniker on uh, uh, Mastodon. So uh, anyway, so let's go ahead and we'll go ahead and get right into this. Now I'm I'm on a massive uh, I'm on my my screen is hugely enlarged, so I'm hoping that uh, everybody will be able to see all the aspects of the demonstration fine. So. Uh, Hopefully. <laughs> so anyway, if we go ahead and start it off, let's go ahead and start with, uh, you know, what is K6? Now, I was at KubeCon uh, two weeks ago in Detroit, and I was working the Grafana booth. And one of the issues was, was that really people don't know what uh, what it, what exactly is K6 or that we were actually part of Grafana Labs. So we're part of the cncf so if you look here on the landscape uh that's that's us in that upper right hand corner there um we're in there we are formally known as load impact uh, we've been open source since 2016. um we have about eh, coming up on 19,000 github stars so we've got a couple likes out there and we really promote the whole shift left testing movement i have our the K6 repository, again, we're fully open source and we're always, by the way, looking for additional contributors and to help out. Um, now, with Grafana, we were acquired in 2021, June of 2021, and we are now under that umbrella. Now, when we were acquired, Raj Dutt, he's the CEO for Grafana Labs, he mentioned about, you know, this was a perfect match. This was a match made in heaven, I mean, really because you figure with K6, we're on the front end. We're trying to prevent and detect before your production, your, you know, before your software goes out to production. And with the Grafana Labs, uh, other, you know, the other items in the uh, Grafana space, that gives you that observability to be able to view what's going on on your system. So we're gonna create the problems. Grafana will let you see the problems. Now, this right here is the most important slide in this entire deck. So if you get nothing else out of this discussion, hopefully you get this, that K6 is a reliability testing tool. Now, our main forte, what we've really been known for is load testing, but we're more than that. So if you think of reliability testing as just kind of this umbrella term, there's there's several different types of testing that are included in that of which load testing is one so you can utilize k6 as you know for contract testing you can do chaos testing which that's a fun thing always right who who doesn't want to try to break things and see what happens we even have product uh where you can do browser testing actual end-to-end -end testing you know controlling a chrome browser and you know seeing the uh you know like the the old uh 
you know, the, the piano, the automated, automated piano. So just a little bit more about us, uh, you know, patting ourselves on the back. Um, ThoughtWorks had this nice thing to say about us. Uh, you know, we are, we pride ourselves in being the easiest tool for developers, testers, SREs to utilize. That's, that's big in our DNA is that we really want to make sure that we're, we have a low barrier to entry. Now, I will just add to this, it's not on this slide, but uh, ThoughtWorks with their, uh, it was just here in October now, their latest radar, we're actually moved into the adopt ring of uh, the tools platform or platform uh, quadrant. So kudos to uh, the KS, K6 uh, developer team. Uh, so again, you know, reliability testing. So our big thing is, again, that we are open source and we are very much into the whole open source concept. We want to promote that. We want to bring more people in, all that good stuff. So it makes us fit in perfectly with CNCF. So it's what we do. You know, we wanted to make, again, sure that uh, our tools are scriptable because, again, we want to make sure that we, we can be used in automation. We want to make sure that you can use your testing in your CICD platform so that you can pass fail based on, you know, certain thresholds that you set. Uh, we are performant, so our application is written in Go. Uh, we do interpretive of uh, some JavaScript uh, test cases, and we're very extensible. We have a, an extensions platform, which is actually what I work with primarily, or an extensions framework, I should say. But uh, we invite Go developers to join with us and work on expanding the capabilities of K6 where they get compiled in. So as new protocols are, you know, thought up or created, we can include those and then uh, you can do load testing with that, or I should say reliability testing. That's uh, again, that is the key. So uh, I kind of alluded to it that, uh, you know, here, if we look at this stack, uh, the actual tests that you create or write are actually written in JavaScript. Now that goes through an, a, a, an interpreter that is written in Go. Uh, it's another open source project called Goja. And then that will allow you to utilize these uh, K6 extensions where you can incorporate again, uh, different protocols and different products. And then all that is written, or I'm sorry, all that is run in the Go runtime. So that was the quick and, and, you know, wanting to make sure that we have the time here. So, uh, so now let's go ahead and go into what is load testing. All right. So when you go out there and start Googling things and that the internet will tell you that load testing is all about putting demand on a system and measuring its response. So now again, this is where we, we find ourselves in that whole shift left area. So K6, again, we're, we're at the developer side. We're kind of at the front end. And then you're going to create some scenarios, this, this high demand. And then with the Grafana stack, you can measure those responses and make sure that your systems are going to be uh, running smoothly after that Super Bowl ad. Uh, so now if we talk real quick, just a quick mention about some of the myths about load testing. So typically you hear about load testing, you think it's for, you know, it's for large companies that, uh, you know, Oh, mom and pop shop, they're not going to be able to uh, do anything with load testing. That's, that's ridiculous. But uh, no, that is not the case. It's, it, and here as well, it, expensive to do. It doesn't have to be. I mean, obviously, you can, you can recreate your entire production environment and pay a lot of money and test against that, but you don't have to. Uh, you know, you don't have to test just in production. Test it beforehand, you know, again, like, we want to incorporate things into your CI/CD pipeline, so you can you can run a limited test or just you know in samples and make sure things are running as expected and uh, that they'll run at higher load. And now here we have the the regular old hockey stick uh, chart here. So what we want to do with the load testing is that we're trying to find that portion where you're you're going to start scaling up. You want to find that breaking point where all of a sudden your user experience is going to get worse. Your response times are going to increase 
at a certain point. So you want to make sure that you know how to handle that when it does happen. And with defining SLOs. Now, SLOs, there's SLOs, SLAs, SLIs. These are all your service level, in this case, objectives with the O's. So you want to define those, and then you can run your tests and make sure that your systems are operating within the, the expected thresholds. So you want to make sure with that. You can use different types of load tests. There's, uh, you know, many different types. So now in this case, I just have four small examples, uh, very brief. Just, you know, your typical one is to just apply an average load and just see how things behave over a few minutes. Uh, you know, a spike test is a very traditional test. That's that's your, you know, your Black Friday uh, scenario where your uh, usage is going to go way up and you just want to make sure that things are handled in those spikes. Uh, the soak test. Now, in this case, uh, it, it may not be able to see that, but this is a test that you would run actually for over eight hour period or even longer. Actually, this is going to be the thing that's going to find your, you know, your 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 memory leaks or maybe you're handling uh, resources incorrectly. Uh, you know, things aren't being returned to a pool. You know, a soak test is where you're really going to see that over a long period of time. And then with the uh, the breakpoint test, this is where you gradually increase things to find that, you know, that elbow or whatever in uh, the hockey stick where things are just going to fall off a cliff, essentially. So these are the different types of uh, tests that you can do with K6. Now, in the implementation, I won't go into the details on each of these, but uh, you can you can basically pattern or shape your uh, activity using what we call executors. And we have a various types that uh, have different behaviors. Now, this is actually a little snippet there on the right side showing some of the configuration for tests. So now you can actually have layers of testing going on. So you can basically uh, add noise in the background, uh, activity noise in the background of another test that you're trying to do in the foreground and you know mix and match it's there's loads of options and you know sky's the limit essentially so now all that is the background for what is k6 just on its own now normally we run these as a binary uh this is just going to be a single binary you know it could be on a quality engineer's desktop they're actually doing things directly. It could be in your CI CD pipeline, uh, you know, just in a, a build pattern uh, doing that. But now with the K6 operator, this allows us to actually distribute load across multiple instances of K6. Now, just, just one thing to note is that uh, we have had some users actually uh, simulate 40,000 virtual users on a single machine. So that's, you know, simulating 40,000 different users running through a similar, uh, you know, it could be an auth uh, authentication flow or, or something, but uh, all that happening at a single time. So with K6 uh, operator, you can even expand that further and distribute that load across multiple machines. So, you know, for four pods, you could have maybe, you know, 160,000 virtual users simulated. Now, one of the things that we really like to uh, promote is that, you know, you can run, it's not a, you know, right once run anywhere type of a thing. Um, in a way, I guess it really is. Uh, but so your test scripts, again, are written in JavaScript. And that way, then we we kind of figured that's kind of a lowest common denominator, possibly, so that uh, maybe you know your developers can create test scripts easily. QE engineers can uh, test things or write things easily. It's what we're going for. But now the difference here now is that with whether you're running the binary directly, you know, a single instance, or you're running in Kubernetes with a, uh, you know, multiple instances uh, running the script at the same time, or if you're using our uh, SaaS product, our cloud product, um, you, you don't make any changes to the scripts, okay? So the same script will run in each of those environments without modification. And here, just to kind of uh, show this 
the, the case a little bit more in Kubernetes. You know, here I, I have uh, an example with uh, a Kubernetes cluster that has four worker nodes. And then in this case, uh, we're having uh, two pods on each worker and all those are running one single script. They're, they each take a fair, you know, portion of that script and then they all run at the same time. And then the, all the activity is being aggregated so that you can see it on a single pane of glass. All right, and uh, this actually this slide I could have probably taken out, but this just kind of shows uh, demonstrates what each of the pods are going to be doing. In that uh, they'll they'll pull in their configuration, they'll apply the script options that are on the uh, the test script that are in the JavaScript. They'll apply the in environment variables, and then uh, you know it's just as if uh, you have four different instances of the same binary. Now again with K6 operator we do some uh, there's not it, it splits up the uh, the actual number of virtual users and how many iterations are going to happen. It's going to split that across how many parallel uh, instances that you're looking for in your request. So let's see, check the time here. Okay, perfect. So hopefully I didn't just fly through that <laughs> too awful fast. But like I said, I wanted to make sure that I had enough time to uh, really demonstrate this and go through... Uh, collect any questions that folks are ha having. And actually, let me take a look at the chat. I've been, I've been bad. I asked Libby to uh, interrupt me in case if any questions did come up. So we are all good. All right, sweet. All right, well then let's, let's pop into the demo. Now I, I burned some incense earlier this morning. Uh, so hopefully the demo gods will be appeased and all things just work. It's uh, would be the ideal situation. So, all right. So let me let me go ahead and switch over here. And by the way, too, I uh, have the uh, the demo I have in the GitHub repository, which I'll be sharing the URLs at the end, um, so that uh, you can actually do the exact same process that I'll be going through here as well. So let me go ahead and pull up my IDE. Now, in this case, uh, I. You know, I'm kind of in the Go world, so I have uh, learned to love Go land. So I have my demo in this uh, for now. So, and there's some of the some of the tooling I have uh, listed in here as well. So you you'd be able to go through this, like I said, line by line, and then actually uh, recreate this. And uh, just I guess for a uh, just for a little bit of the housekeeping in that, I'll be. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually be running the K6 operator in a Kubernetes cluster on my machine that uh, will just be in Docker. I'm using uh, K3D. Uh, it'll be multiple uh, multiple workers in that, um, and I'm actually going to use a customized K6 binary with using those extensions that I uh, talked about earlier, and I'm actually going to output my metrics in live lives during the testing up to Grafana Cloud. And now I am using the, the free forever Grafana Cloud. So there's no cost associated with uh, running this test. And then I'll show you some of the uh, the K6 Cloud as well. Just uh, a very brief, but uh, just the free features. So all that. And when I say free features at the cost of an email, um, email address. All right, so we'll go ahead and we'll pop in here, and I do have those uh, prerequisites listed as well. So um, now I've already downloaded the the actual source code for the operator, and as I mentioned, I'm going to be using this Prometheus output, and that is not by default in the K6 binary. Uh, normally, it's just a uh, we just uh, emit a, a summary to the console. Like I said, this is typically run as a binary on some a single machine, and then the output would be just displayed directly there. So now, because we are using output to Prometheus, right now we have that as a uh, extension. So it does require co a custom compilation step. And again, that's totally Dockerized in this example. So as long as you have Docker, you should be good. You can you can run all this. You can build this. So. 
And again, here in this step, this is actually where I would go and pull down a create a custom image of K6 that includes those uh, that extra extension. And then I push it up to my own personal Docker Hub uh, repository. That's one key is that this has to be, K6 has to be embedded into an image and that image has to be in something publicly accessible. Um, so I, I guess I can go ahead and run those. So I have them already locally. So, but just uh, for a demo, I will go ahead and run through these steps again, and hopefully it doesn't take up too much time. My apologies if they do, but it gives me time for a quick drink. All right. But uh, yeah, so I'll go ahead and just describe what's happening here, though, is that uh, with this Docker file, I'm using a separate uh, build stage. So I'm pulling down the source code for uh, the extension, and I'm utilizing a utility that uh, K6 has called XK6, which uh, anyone familiar with the Caddy server, uh, there's something very similar. Uh, in fact, we originally started with a fork of XCaddy. But it's just a way to uh, actually build a new Go binary, um, including these uh, these modules. Uh, let's see. Okay, yeah, this is going to be a little worrisome here, uh, but uh, <sighs> let's see. The gods were appeased. I'm I'm telling you for sure. They they were so. Yeah, this should hopefully be just a moment. If not, I can skip through this, kill it. I do have the image pushed up to my Docker hub already. So we may have to just uh, skip this. Normally, it doesn't take a minute and a half to compile the uh, Go binary. It's, uh, it's, it's much better than that. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and kill this. There we go. All right, and now we'll go ahead and uh, I have this local image, okay, uh, as long as I didn't just destroy it. Let's see, let me switch over here. All right, all right, so let me go ahead and list about my Docker images, and hopefully this is here. Yes, okay, so this is the, the image that I just built. We'll just say that for uh, cases of uh, the demonstration. So I have this now locally. Um, and now I can go ahead in this project, I have these test scripts. So if we look here, so simple.js, this is probably, this is a very simple test case. And hopefully folks can read that well enough. But uh, here's where I'm defining our options. So here I'm going to say this test case is going to have 10 virtual users. So I'm going to simulate 10 people doing this over a duration of 10 seconds. Uh, here I'm going to throw an exception or basically kill the process or return a non-zero uh, return code from my build uh, to uh, say if the rate does not exceed 10 uh, requests per second, then to fail the tests. Now, I'm not going to exceed that, so we'll, we won't have to worry, but the test is going to just hit this uh, test URL that we happen to have on, on the K6 website, so test k6.io. So I have this script here, which I'm going to run this directly from my uh, Docker image. So if I go ahead and I'm gonna run it from this console here, okay. And this is how normally things are run on the local machine. Now this will just execute for 10 seconds here. And then we will see the actual output from the test. Okay, all right. This is better here with it wide. Um, but yeah, so we'll see that, uh, okay, in that 10 seconds, we went ahead and we created 1,494 uh, actual HTTP requests against that website. Um, we see here that, uh, the, again, the virtual users we had were 10 for the duration of the test, uh, and everything was successful. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So we were all good. We everything returned to 200, so we were we were fine with that, and we reached a, a rate of 148 requests per second, so that which far exceeds the 10 in the threshold. 
So that just shows that's the kind of the normal experience that someone would have on their desktop. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and create my Kubernetes cluster. So again, I'm using K3D, which is an awesome project, but uh, that will actually create a cluster, K, a Kubernetes cluster with, in this case, uh, three different K3S nodes inside of it. Now this will just take a moment here again, and it'll be fully started. And then I will use another, once this is started, I will use another awesome project called K9S to actually look at our cluster. So if you'll see here, we have some of our containers creating just for the overall system. I'll pop into namespaces here now, and then we'll see that these are our, we have these uh, namespaces available. So now for our testing, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create uh, a different, uh, oh, let's go ahead and install the operator first. How about that? And let me show you, pre okay, I'm going to go ahead and do this and we'll see that there is no K6 resource just yet. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pop in here. I'm going to actually install the operator. And now do this. All right, pop into there. All right, and here's all these resources. So these were actually just created. We utilize underneath the covers. Uh, oh boy, uh, customize. <laughs> Sorry, mind went for a moment. So customize to create all your resources and then we push those in. So now if I go ahead and check for the K6 resource, I you see that it is actually showing there, but there are no instances of that resource just yet. Now think of the resources actually in this case as being a trigger for a, a uh, load test. So now in this case, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create my demo namespace and I'll just uh, leave a six up here running. So I created my K6 demo namespace. I'm going to create now a config map, which contains all the test scripts. So now, again, these are different scripts for uh, actual different load tests that I've created and have available in the project. Again, when you download this, you'll get all these. And I'm going to bundle those up into a single config map. So that config map will just be uh, basically a repository. Now, ideally, uh, in normal use, you would apply uh, good uh, GitOps practices and maybe, you know, as uh, scripts are altered, you know, have those committed into a Git repository and then have GitHub actions that will then any changes to main branch will then be recreate this config map in your Kubernetes cluster. So we have that in there now. Um, we'll see that uh, there's the namespace. And then now if I go into uh, config maps, we'll see there's my test scripts. And again, this is just all those different scripts. So I could edit it from here as well, but you know, do the GitOps thing, do it in Git. That would be better. <laughs> all right. So now that we have those set up, let me go back to my cheat sheet here. Um, there's my readme. All right, we'll just go that way. All right, now, as I mentioned, I set up everything in Grafana Cloud. Now I'm not gonna go through and you know describe how to you know, create a free account, but in the Grafana website, you can go there directly, create a free account. Um, similarly with K6, you can go to app.k6.io or even on the, the, the k6.io anywhere, really. You should be able to find the URL to be able to go in there and then create your free account in K6. And uh, we'll we'll go through the other, those here in a moment. So now when you do that, you'll want to create obviously some API keys. And since you do not want to commit those in any kind of, uh, you know, resources that are in GitHub, of course, uh, I'm going to have them here. I have my script, which I will actually create some secrets to have these uh, environment variables set up as config maps and secrets. So let me go ahead and run that. Uh, let's see, dependencies run. Okay. 
So now I have for my accounts, I have my secrets in there. And so here's Prometheus config. So that shows that there. Have my secrets available. And let's see, we can go ahead and pop into this and see that they are there created. All right. So now that we have those set up, we can go ahead and actually trigger a distributed load test. So again, as I mentioned, um, you know, I ran that example directly with the image of a single instance. Now those, again, that shows that these, these particular scripts that are in here, again, I didn't, I didn't modify them. There was no, the uh, K6 operator will run the exact same test scripts that I did with the direct uh, single instance. So there's no modifications there. The only difference will be that we will use these resources to actually determine how many, what our parallelism is. So in this case, I'm going to go and use this one here to output to Grafana Cloud. Okay, and I'm going to have it here that we're going to have uh, four, four pods will be created and, and distribute the load that's in the, that load test. Uh, let's see. And here it just points to the config map we're having containing all the scripts and I'm going to tell it to run simple JS. So again, that was all strictly in that config map that I just loaded a few minutes ago. Uh, arguments to the actual uh, bin K6 binary itself. Now here I'm just adding something in here just to uh, distinguish between the script executions. So I'm using this tag in there to be able to have a you know, create this custom uh, label in Prometheus to say that this is my test ID. Everything is going to have this name of K6 output Grafana Cloud. That's just kind of making things easier to tie back. Uh, I'm giving the name of my custom image. So obviously you can use this one, but uh, you wouldn't be able to modify it. Um, not unless you did some uh, underhanded things and got to my account. So please don't. No. But, uh, and this determines that the binary should output to Prometheus remote. So we use the Prometheus remote, right? And then also coming from the environment variables, we'll be pulling in config secrets and uh, uh, the URL and then our secrets for our API and accounts and all of that. So we can actually write. All right, let me get back to my, my cheat sheet here. Okay. So now one thing that's, well, here, I'll just, we'll run this. So I'm going to use a, just a, your normal cube cuddle and uh, cube cuddle command. Uh, I'm going to apply that resource. So the K6 output Grafana cloud into the K6 demo namespace. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and display pods here. So I'm in the, uh, the K6 uh, demo namespace right now. There's no pods in here. I'm going to go ahead and use kubectl to trigger the resource. So now we'll start seeing that uh, the whole life cycle of the, what the operator is doing. So, you know, obviously with the creation of the resource now, it's going to go in there. It's going to create the initializer, which is going to inspect your script. And then it's going to determine how many pods to create uh and it will actually spawn up another one we should see yeah here we go the starter which is going to look at the the script and then determine say that uh, oh here in this script uh let's see here we're running this simple one it says okay we wanted to run 10 virtual users so this is going to divvy up amongst the pods the 10 users so one pod will get two users, another pod will get two users, and then uh, the other two will get three each. So we have the, the full 10 virtual users are accounted for. And then each will run for 10, the, the duration of 10 seconds. So obviously we see here that that's, that's already been completed. So now if we pop into this, we can go ahead and look at any one of these at the logs, and then we'll see that here in this case, this particular pod was one of the, the two that got three users, and it was responsible for 460 requests, all of which were successful. 
And then similarly, we could go to any of the other pods. So I'm just going to here. And this was one that got two. So all the, uh, all the, uh, uh, the virtual users were accounted for and everything was run successfully. So now um, you can also do things too, where if uh, with uh, the Grafana free cloud, I could, if I had uh, say, uh, what is it? Grafana agent or uh, oh, prom tail is the other project. I could have had these logs also going up to Loki, which is our uh, log aggregation service. Uh, and then we could see all that output directly in Grafana as well. But uh, I've only done the uh, Prometheus, the metrics output. So let's go ahead and pop over to Grafana. All right. And then I've created a couple dashboards. Now, this is not actually in the project in the, uh, the source code repository. But if we look here now, we'll see that here is that uh, test ID that I, I noted on there that's actually being put as the, to the command line of each K6. So that way we can pull into there and then just, you know, and I'll, I'll be the first to admit my, my Grafana skills are lacking. Uh, Grafana foo is not uh, my best. Uh Oh, are we not, uh, are we having audio issues? Nope. I can hear you just fine. Okay. All right. Whew. Had, had me worried <laughs> there. Uh, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> that would be a bad thing. Uh, K6 I do have then... a question if you want. Uh, sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. Read it. Sure. So just to recap, K6 could be triggered from my CI CD pipeline and trigger the load testing that requires a custom image previously built. Is that right? That is correct. Yes. Yes. So what I just did here with the, uh, the actually creating the resource. So if you were running in Kubernetes, um, obviously, um, you could uh, have your CI CD pipeline actually apply that that resource to trigger the test. So, and then uh, you could have uh, things that are, you know, into your observability stack, let's say, uh, just in case if you're not using Grafana or if you're using, you know, you could be using Datadog, you could be using uh, really anything else. Uh, Grafana is in the big tent. So we, we want to be able to play with everyone nicely. So yeah, you could have things that are checking into that and checking the state and then, uh, you know, you can uh, fail a test. Now, if you're using the K6 binary directly in your CI CD, you can uh, get that non-zero return. And in that way, then you could fail a build directly. So there's, there's definitely options. So now, uh, but yeah, so coming back here in my uh, test results, we'll see that uh, overall between the four instances of the pod, uh, we have 1,521 uh, requests. The P95 for those requests were 71 milliseconds. Um, and then I can drill into this. And again, like I said, my, uh, my Grafana foo is lacking. So please don't uh, laugh at some of my uh, dashboards. Uh, <laughs> I'm learning. Um, but yeah, so here's the results. This is, this is uh, digging into the actual uh, test run here. Um, and I think actually we need this piece here. We can look at this. Um, and then we'll see all the, uh, the request rate you know, as it was running through. So it kind of had a little bit of a, a ramp up in a way, but uh, the gray line here is the number of VUs altogether. So again, this is, we had the 10 virtual users simulated. Um, and then this line, yeah, for the response time. So it looks like, yeah, there are 60 milliseconds there, according to that, those points. Um, and actually, I don't think I have these yeah, in real fine um, points, but uh, there you go. But yeah, 60.3 milliseconds going across there. So that's a, that was a very simple example. So again, that was just just doing this, going through, hitting one website, uh, you know, as much as possible in 10 seconds uh, from 10 different users. Uh, let's see. Oh, looks like uh, it's testing with K6 operator limited to applications within the same Kubernetes environment. Uh, no, uh, I mean, because in this case, uh, my target system, the system being uh, uh, the load being generated on is, yeah, is external to what I'm running the operator in. 
So it uh, does not have to be in the same unless, uh, you know, unless there are certain restrictions on like uh, hitting a, you know, maybe a ingress isn't uh, publicly accessible or, you know, if you if you have things like that where maybe a ser- special service account or whatever. But uh, but yeah, no, there's no real no real restrictions. Um, let's see Went through here could allow you to load test private endpoints. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yes. And you could, you could output to cloud. Yep. Um, and the K6 cloud. Yeah. Let's go ahead and show that now. Um, oops. Let's see. Yes. Uh, so yeah. So that's where a lot of the things going uh, with the, about Git commands in place of API calls. Um, yeah. Some of the things that you can do with the extensions so now the extensions ecosystem, which again, that's that's what I work more with. Um, so I'm a developer background and uh, primarily in Java for like 25 years or whatever. I, wow, I'm old. But uh, I've been in the Go area for the last four years, roughly. Um, but uh, anyway, but yeah, so I work primarily with Go developers to extend or to enhance the uh, integrations that we have in our in our extensions. So you can do things like, uh, you know, you could actually embed the Git API so that, uh, you know, from your actual scripts, your test scripts, you could you could do Git commands in your test script. Um, so, you know, if you wanted to actually test Git itself, you could do that. And we do actually have a uh, repository out there called XK6Git, if I'm recalling it correctly, um, that will let you do that. Uh, I see a mention there about XK6 Chaos. Yes, that's very similar. It's uh, we have these custom extensions so that those extensions allow you to use these uh, the the custom tooling that you create within your your JavaScript. Um, we even have one for XK6 Kubernetes where you can do things from your test script. You can actually say, oh yeah, create a unique namespace. Maybe uh, create something a random namespace to run these things in and install and maybe do a uh, update to uh, the config map or things like that. And then, uh, you know, you can have chaos fun by uh, killing pods randomly or, you know, see what happens. So a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. Uh, Let's see, can K6 test against application running outside of Kubernetes cluster and then VMs? Yeah, again, as long as it can hit the URLs, that's all up for grabs. Uh, let's see. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Chaos. There's, uh, we, there's multiple things. K6 chaos is actually a JavaScript library, um, which has different chaos experiments that utilize the XK6 Kubernetes extension to actually do things directly with Kubernetes. So, um, all right. So I think I got things there. Oh yeah, gRPC endpoints. Yes, natively with uh, um, natively with the K6 binary, uh, it does support gRPC. Um, it also supports things like uh, you know other protocols with web sockets. Uh, uh, let's see what else. I mean, there's even things in there with extensions where I mean you can test a, you can load test an SMTP server if you really want to. Uh, so yeah, it's a uh, it's a it's a large ecosystem. There's lots of options. So, uh, but yeah. So let me uh, take a look back here. I think the questions have uh, slowed down or cooled off there. So, okay. Um, let me go ahead and I'm going to run another example. So this is going to be a little bit more. I don't know. Uh, it's not a massive example. It's still pretty simple. But uh, this will try to somewhat describe a spike. So now I mentioned about these uh, executors. Oh, uh, I better uh, hurry up through here. Uh, We have these executors that can define different shapes. So in this case, I'm using ramping arrival, right? And what that does is it allows you to do things in stages. So in this case, what I'm doing is I'm going to, I'm saying I'm based on arrival rate. So I'm going to be looking specifically at request per second. So I'm going to start off with 10 requests per second. I'm going to maintain that rate over 10 seconds. And then I'm going to bump up to 150 requests per second. 
and I'm going to do that within five seconds. So it's going to go from 10 to 150 in a matter of five seconds. And then once it reaches that level, it will remain there at 10 seconds. And then I have it start coming down a little bit, but uh, not as sharp as what the initial entry spike was. So we can go ahead and we can run this script as well. So now all I have to do is now on this particular resource. So I was outputting to Grafana Cloud. So in this case, I'm going to change this to be, you know, I'm going to say do my uh, doorbuster sale. Um, we're going to go ahead and, you know, we can do, uh, let's make it six. I don't know. It's to change something. Uh, I'm going to change this. I'm going to go ahead and change this name so that in my dashboard it, it uh, reflects correctly. Um, let's say, uh, you know, my uh, K6 Alpha Cloud Doorbuster. Okay. All right. So everything else is the same. I'm just going to have it run a different script. Uh, so again, I have to recreate that. Uh, that resource. Now, this this is one of the things is that uh, it appears, and this is kind of early days with the operator as well. So, you know, if there's any issues, be, feel free to write them up. You know, any contributions, feel free to uh, contribute. We're always looking for additional work, hands on these things. Um, but uh, with this, I'm going to have to delete that actual, um, this particular instance of the, the K6 resource. So there we go. I'm going to go ahead and delete that um, because a, a, just a simple change won't be detected and it wouldn't uh, relaunch it. So if I come back here, ah, sorry if I'm popping around too much here. So I'm going to go ahead and apply the same resource again and then that will then recreate it there. Okay, I'm going to go over, switch over to pods. And then now, there we go. We'll see that, uh, yeah, we're we're running six different pods now. Uh, those are all going, so I can come back here. Um, let's see. Let me keep refreshing here because we should start seeing this coming in. There we go. Here's the door buster now is showing up. Look in here to the details, and then, uh, yeah, it's again, I could probably with work, I can make this a prettier graph uh, as this is coming through, but uh, but yeah, so this is all going through Prometheus now, all right. So now, I next I wanted to show you real quick the uh, Grafana cloud. So I've already set this up, and again, I'm, I'm using the free one, uh, the free version. So no subscriptions is what they we call them in K6. Uh, so let me go ahead and run that. So I'm going to go do this K6 cloud. Uh, so yeah, this is this, this is mine using the free version. Now you'll I'll have to point out here that parallelism is one. Um, with the free tier, you can only have one single instance uh, uh, basically running. Um, otherwise, it won't won't quite work. So it's it's not as fun, unfortunately. So if I go ahead and get to my README, and let's see, oh, let's see. I thought I had. Where's my all right, I will just uh, recreate that. All right, so this one's going to go to K6 Cloud. I was hoping I had my uh, little copy-paste help. Um, but alas, I had to manually do it. Horrible. Oh, the humanity. Uh, so, yeah, so now if I come in here, this is an old run here. Uh, we should see once that container starts running, that I'm just simply outputting results now to my K6 cloud account. And here they are. So again, this is the free one. And this is where, you know, again, this gives you much nicer dashboards and results than uh, what I could do with, uh, with my Grafana skills. So <laughs> let's see. 
Uh, let's see. While that's running there, does does it deploy as a deployment or a job? Um, actually, neither. The uh, um, so the actual op because it's an operator, all you have to do is create the resource, and then the operator is listening for the creation of those resources. So it'll create uh, pods directly. So you don't. It's not uh, based on any uh, deployment resource or or a specific job. It's not cron based or anything like that. Um, the scheduling is strictly by creation of the resource. You know, pushing that resource up. Um, and yeah, well, the pods do die, but they don't go away. So if you noticed here that uh, they they do linger on, so I would have to go and delete the resource, the K6 resource, which would actually then clean up everything. And uh, from my use of it so far, I actually threw this script together to uh, just make it a little bit nicer, um, which would actually go and delete the resource if it was previously existing. Um, that way then you wouldn't have to worry about uh, uh, what I had mentioned about, it seems like the uh, pods not not getting, the job not re-triggering if it uh, already existed or just changed. Um, so again, that's that's probably just kind of, uh, yeah, could be, could be fixed. So uh, let's see. All right, so we've got that. Now, I do want to show this too, because this is one of the fun things. So obviously we're, I'm looking at two different, we're looking at two different SaaS providers, uh, two different SaaS solutions, K6 Cloud, and then we have the uh, Grafana Cloud, right? Well, since we're all now under the same umbrella, we actually even have this now. So in your case, I'm sorry, in your Grafana, you can actually add the Grafana app, or K6 app. So what that does is that recreates the, the K6 experience inside of Grafana. So now you can have everything co-located in your observability platform. So now if we look here, you'll see that here's my simple test. So this is that old one that I had. And then uh, this is here, the new one that was just, uh, we just ran. So we can drill into there. And then now we have even nicer graphs than what I was able to create. So. Kudos to uh, the you know our K6 developers who actually created this uh, app for Grafana. So you can plug that in and use that for free. Now this does use as a data source. It's actually using the K6 cloud, uh, so it's actually pulling metrics directly from K6 cloud into Grafana this way. Just the visualization. Um, all right, and let's see. And I'm trying to keep an eye on the time and I'm looks like we got like six minutes left and let's see I did notice I missed a question here from Manuel um, in terms of usability the reason that we must build the image and not load JS code test dynamically is because it must be compiled to Go language. Yes, it does have to be compiled and that's because uh, also because we are using the uh, the Prometheus output, which is an extension. Um, now, well, you know, don't tell anybody, just between you, me, and the rest of the internet, um, we are working now that uh, K6 is under the Grafana Labs umbrella. We are working toward uh, Prometheus becoming the default output for K6. Uh, so if you're not doing just console, it'll be embedded in there. So you can just say on a, you know, a command line argument, you can say the output is going to be Prometheus, provide obviously the, uh, the remote right endpoint to uh, target, and then it'll just happen. You won't have this uh, extra compile stuff that we have right now, but uh, that's, that's, we're still working on that because uh, there were some of the, some of the problems with uh with uh, Prometheus output right now was the uh, the histogram support. So um, that is currently being worked on. That is very close to being complete. Um, and so with right now, we just released version 0 0.41 of, uh, of K6. Um, I'm not going to say, you know, what version, but I, I'm just going to say it should be soon. <laughs> uh, but we are, uh, that is being worked on. So, um, 
you won't need this compilation stuff. Uh, we try to make it as easy as possible with the XK6, um, but it still can be a little bit hands-on, and some people do run into some issues, um, you know, at times. So that's why I'm trying to put together some of the Docker documentation to maybe make it a little bit easier, uh, you know, so that as long as you have Docker, you don't have to worry about having a Go runtime set up, um, you know, all that. So just, yeah, again, trying to reduce some of that friction, just make it easy to adopt. Uh, let's see. So I think that pretty much covers everything that uh, for the demo. Um, now, I did want to go ahead and finalize some things with the slides here. Uh, let's see. There we go. All right. So, yeah, so now with all that, you know, where do we go from here? So, again, with hooked in with your observability, you know, you need to, you want to bring in those, measure those four golden signals. So, you know, again, whether you're using Grafana or something like a new relic or Datadog, you know, make sure that you're watching these, these elements, you know, that you're checking the latency, you're checking the amount of traffic how your application behaves, you know, when the uh, it's saturated uh, and, you know, of course, tracking the number of errors. By doing this up front, you're going to get a lot more, you know, a lot more bang for your buck uh, by doing this, this testing up front. Um, just, uh, whoops, ah, there we go. I didn't realize I had my uh, uh, little act my animations on there but yeah so <laughs> including the things the checks to make sure that you know the network quality is good that uh you know you're accommodating the uh your your black friday scenario you know you're not having all kinds of 500s and other errors going through uh and that uh you know and also to check and make sure that your infrastructure is not under provisioned um that your you know your your setups are enough to accommodate your needs and again, that's pre-production. Include that shift left, bring it up front. Just make sure everything's running. Use your observability platform to watch and make sure that everything is uh, going well while you're putting everything together. And that uh, continues post-production. Um, and with that, I think, uh, oh, look at that. One minute to spare. I, I really do want to thank everyone's for their participation and uh, my contact info is there. You can reach me on Twitter uh, again with Mastodon as well uh, and LinkedIn and the the uh, GitHub repository is listed there for the full demonstration. And thank you all. Thank you so much, Paul. Thank you everyone for joining us and for all your questions. Um, you know exactly where to find Paul. And this presentation and slides will be available uh, later today online. If you can, you can use this registration link again or go to our online programs YouTube playlist. Um, thanks again for joining us. Thank you, Paul. And we'll see y'all at another uh, online program CNCF Live webinar soon. All righty. Thank you.